Hello everyone, today I've got this nice little box on my desk and uh, yeah from the video title and from basically the text on the box you could figure that uh, it's gonna be an unboxing video of um, Ascar 65PHQ telescope and uh, yeah why I'm gonna uh, why I'm doing this unboxing video today is first of all because I love doing unboxing videos and uh, also because existing videos of this uh, unboxing or reviews of this telescope even though I like them a lot um, for me they probably missed something uh, and uh, I'm not sure what exactly but I'm gonna try my own video uh, try to do it and um, let's see where it takes us um, another reason is that this telescope was shipped directly from China and uh, I ordered it on the Aliexpress uh, marketplace the thing is that uh, up until recently uh, Aliexpress worked pretty bad uh, in um, for delivering stuff uh, to Portugal, to European Union, I, I guess. So probably I would order some very small things like adapters or like the cheapest possible stuff, but I've never ordered anything of uh, value. And uh, yeah, this is my first purchase and I think they actually improved a lot their service. Uh, they made uh, various um, offers like uh, free shipping uh, shipping in 12 days uh, i've ordered already a bunch of stuff for telescopes like mounts uh, dovetail plates and uh, so on um, and uh, yeah this time i've decided that i want to try to order uh, the telescope and uh, oh, I expected that uh, it would go through European Union and Portuguese customs that also had a bad reputation for like charging too much money, working slowly. And it turned out that um, it was not the case this time, even though the whole process took around one month. So yeah, I ordered it on 24th of July and I received it on I think 25th of August so yeah months uh, roughly a month and uh, yeah it was good option good option for me because um, this telescope uh, was out of stock in uh, basically all the European uh, stores like uh, astroshop.eu and telescopeexpress.de so yeah right now I'm seeing that Telescope Express has it uh, but uh, I also noticed that I paid 200 euros less than the price they set. Uh, it has its drawbacks, of course, because uh, in case of any problems, uh, yeah, until I unbox this box, I still don't know if the telescope is there and uh, it's in a good condition and uh, if it's not that would be a huge problem because i personally have no idea how to return stuff directly to china probably it would cost me like uh, the whole price of the telescope or at least uh, the the um, the cost i've i've saved by not ordering it from the european store so okay let's go Okay, inside the box, as usual, we have another box. Okay, this one has nothing on it. Let's open it as well. Okay, finally we got some content. Uh, here's the... I don't know what's a user manual, uh, a certificate of uh, optics. Yeah, well, one thing to note is uh, why did I order this telescope at all? I mean, what was my decision taking process? Basically, I wanted a telescope uh, refractor with a 
I mean, it actually didn't matter that much if it was a refractor or a Newtonian or a, a Cassegrain. Um, my main uh, objective was to have a telescope with a very flat field. And this telescope, uh, at least from reviews and from uh, claims from the manufacturer, um, has a very decent flat field all the way to the um, uh, to the full frame sensor. Here, I believe we have a whole bunch of uh, different adapters. Let's just check one of them. Yeah, it's an adapter, as you can see. And we have three of them, I believe. The thing is that, uh, from what I read, in order to get a right, in order basically to focus on the camera like uh, like mine, you have to use three of them. But we will uh, see it later. Okay. Here goes the telescope itself. Okay, the rest of the box looks almost empty. I just see there is a missing handle from the rings. Yeah, nothing is there anymore. So yeah, the basically uh, the box doesn't have that much. Telescope is pretty self-contained, I would say. Everything is on it. Um, and uh, yeah, let's let's go ahead and remove this plastic wrap. Let's find first where. Oh, okay, this one is opening and. Yeah, uh, it feels very nice, uh, like a very sturdy build, uh, very solid. Um, I think it's around three kilos or something, but uh, with the old stuff on top of it, it's gonna be even more. Okay, let's take off the lid. Here we can see the lens. Um, so yeah, what's nice about this telescope is that it does not require, um, it has uh, no fixed uh, like a back focus uh, distance, so uh, there will be no problems of uh, getting uh, the correct back focus with adapters or uh, rings and stuff. So yeah, basically um, it, it's worth mentioning that this um, extremely uh, or allegedly flat field that uh, comes with this telescope and the quality uh, comes at the cost of um, uh, of basically it being uh, slower than many other telescopes. It has a, a f ratio of 6.4. And yeah, also worth mentioning some of the other characteristics of it. Uh, it has a 416 millimeters of focal length and it's 65 millimeters of aperture. Uh, so yeah, it's a nice telescope for a wide field uh, astrophotography for the beginner, I believe. And um, uh, yeah, nothing to add here. So the focuser is the is rack focuser. Okay, uh, it has some uh, at some points. I don't know how to describe it, but uh, like it's. Uh, uh, I think I've read it on some other reviews uh, on some other telescopes reviews like Asker. FRA 300, like a sandy feeling, like something is inside the focuser, 
that is not uh, that makes it not moving like s very smoothly inside the when you basically rotate the knob. I don't know if it affects anything. Uh, yeah, the thing is that when you order stuff from uh, any anywhere, basically not only AliExpress, um, you don't know if uh, it has any damages or misalignment between lenses until you actually take a photo of a stars to check it. I mean, of course, you can have some fancy artificial star setup, but usually the real star tests um, should be the most representative. Let's try to remove it. Yeah, okay, it's uh, one and a quarter inch uh, to two inch adapter and here we have a like a, this big hole we can look inside so it's a clean aperture um, without uh, any obstruction into it in it lens hood can be retracted and fixed like this it makes it a bit longer but of course it should protect it from um, light beams and uh, maybe a little bit of dew of course you will still need to have a uh, dew heating on it okay next um, yeah let's put it back on on the rings so this is how it looks assembled um, yeah the one of the i don't know if it's a problem or at least uh, aesthetically i just don't like how this handle uh, forces you to keep uh, rings at this distance which means that uh, if you want to have a more stable setup basically like uh, having some distance between those rings and uh, so they hold the telescope uh, like it's a wider uh, grip i would say uh, you will have to remove that handle and uh, organize some other solution like uh, attaching some uh, dovetail bar or anything else so you can put more accessories on top of it okay right now i'm gonna go ahead and install all the different um, gear i have including the camera autofocuser guiding camera uh, ASI Air Pro and we will see how it looks like as you can see it became pretty long in comparison to what it was um, when I just uh, took it from the box. So yeah, some things to notice. Autofocuser bracket is actually below the um, dovetail plate and um, it can be an issue. And I saw it uh, being an issue on some mounts already in some other reviews that um, actually does not allow to um, to basically mount uh, the telescope on the mount because uh, this bracket goes in into in the way. Of course, this focusing solution, as always, makes it a hell to balance this uh, telescope because of the uh, disproportional uh, weight on this side. And uh, yeah, probably it can be offset partially by moving uh, this. Um, finder scope bracket here and uh, like distributing weight more uh, uniformly at the same time um, there can be other solution is to flip this telescope upside down have a focuser on top and maybe invent some uh, some new bracket or uh, 3d printed um, so it uses a belt drive and basically EAF is going to be on top of the telescope, making it more easy to balance. 
yeah that's uh, pretty much it looks uh, very neat uh, unfortunately in this video I'm not gonna test its performance but uh, I will in some uh, in the coming days probably if uh, the sky allows and uh, yeah I'll try to share the results with you guys and um, yeah thanks everyone for watching I hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah stay tuned bye